So when I was living in Seattle, I went to this place called American Laser, and I bought a package of laser hair removal sessions for $2,300. I had to put it on a credit card. Actually, I had to open a credit account with them so I could pay for it. And this package was for full beard and neck, and it was supposed to be six laser sessions plus two years of free follow-ups. So after having, I think it was only one laser session with them, I moved to Denmark. And this place is called American Laser. So obviously they don't have international offices. Definitely no clinics here in Denmark. So I was stuck in this weird situation where I couldn't get the laser therapy that I'd paid for unless I was in the States. So I was lucky enough to be able to fly back to the States every couple of months, three months or so, for a work-related trip. And um, I would call up the American Laser Center that was local to the area and say, I would like an appointment. And I would get my laser sessions that way. And that was how I did my beard removal. Except the problem is, my last laser session was in December, when I was home in Seattle for Christmas. I haven't been able to get to a laser clinic since then. It's now July 18th. So my beard is actually growing back, as you can see. It's kind of all over. And, I mean, I haven't shaved for a few days, um, but it's been getting more and more visible as time has gone on. And <laughs> razors are ridiculously expensive here. It's like $37 for four blades of, like, a standard, you know, face razor. And uh, in order to keep my hair invisible or light enough that it can be covered with makeup, light makeup, because I hate wearing heavy makeup, um, I have to go through about one blade a week, and, uh, or, or, even, or even quicker, and I have to be selective about which day I change the blade, because if I change it on Monday, by Friday it might be too dull for me to get a clean shave to go out dancing or something, whatever. So basically it's a huge pain in the ass, and... I haven't wanted to change blades lately, and um, I've been feeling, uh, I've been having lazy days lately, so I haven't shaved for a few days, and um, it's resulted in me having this growth on my chin, and, you know, I know that I do all my videos from sitting here in this chair, but uh, I don't often spend all day in this place without going out into the world. So going out into the world with this facial stubble um, and maybe no makeup uh, has been an interesting experience. And it's been the kind of thing where on my mind I'll go, well, do I present as male or female? How, what do I do about this? Do I try to pass as male because of the beard? Or do I try to pass as female because of the breasts? So like, I'm not wearing a bra right now. And here's, here's what I've got going on. So it's, uh, it's not, you know, huge action, but it's noticeable for a guy. So I'm like, what do I do about this? And uh, the answer that I seem to have come to on my own is just, who cares? Just, is anyone going to notice my facial hair? I don't know. If they do, are they going to think something weird? I don't know. If they if they think something weird, are they going to say something? I don't know. And, you know, going going out to, like, restaurants and places that I've eaten at before when I'm presenting extremely femininely and seeing the same server as I'm like, well, is this person going to now be confused about my gender? Have, seeing as they've seen me before, but they don't really know me, you know, are they going to spit in my food? I mean, I don't actually worry about that, but I'm just kind of listing off paranoias that come about uh, from from not feeling like I fit into one gender or the other. 
Um, and definitely when I am feeling this way, I don't make quite as much of an effort with my voice. So I'm not, I'm not speaking all girly right now because I just don't feel it. And, um, I actually feel more masculine, more male, because of things like this. And, um, I guess at the beginning of my transition, when I was trying so hard to train the world around me to perceive me as female, I was deathly afraid of coming across male in any sort of, of way. And now that I feel like I've accomplished that mission, and in one way or another I have either convinced or sledgehammered people into taking me as a female, then now I feel like I can relax a bit. And if I have male attributes, just let them out. I mean, my Sean Connery voice has become kind of a parlor trick at parties. People request it. And uh, depending on my mood I, and who's around, I might or might not do it. You shmommy bastard. That was not very good. Anyway, um, I don't quite feel like I'm genderqueer because I don't identify as genderqueer. I, I, when I'm, when I'm trying to pass as female, when I'm trying to present as female, I still get extremely upset if I'm read as male. And, um, but days like this, I don't really care how I'm perceived, and I don't care what pronouns are used for me. So I feel just very in this strange space of fluidity, I guess. Gender fluidity. And, um, I don't know, I was just talking to a friend online about, <laughs> about, like, if, if, my breasts are actually causing me trouble when I'm when I'm wanting to go out and feeling like this. Maybe I should just get a binder. And so on some days, I just could try to present as male if I want to. Um, not that I consider myself male again. I definitely don't. I know who I am. But I'm also honest about who I am. And... I am a person that was born male and has a lot of male attributes. And uh, I think I think that there are a lot of male attributes that I have that biological women would like to have, at least some. Or they've thought about it, or they're curious, or they go, oh, I wonder what it would be like to have a beard, or I'd like to have a little beard, or um, I'd like to have a deep voice, or I'd like to have a penis. Uh, and I, I feel like I've spent a long time trying to mask these attributes. When the truth is that I don't really need to. Um, even if it makes somebody uncomfortable, it doesn't make me uncomfortable. And, I mean, these, a lot of these male physical attributes, a lot of my male facial features... I'm going to resume my laser, so I'm going to finish burning off all this hair. Um... I'm going to get surgeries, and the after these surgeries are over, uh, there's going to be substantially fewer male attributes that I own. So I might as well enjoy what I've got while I can. And I guess it's also really funny because I feel like the dating pool for me has gotten so small. But I was, I was joking with my friend online that... Uh, if I, sh if I get a binder, then I can try to pass as male at some clubs. I can go clubbing and try to pick up some straight girls. Because, damn, sometimes straight girls are so hot, and I look at them and I'm like, well, they're clearly not into women, so that sucks. But, I don't know, maybe I could pull the wool over some eyes for an evening. And just have a good time. I haven't done anything like that for a long time. As a guy. So, those are my thoughts. I'm out of time, and I'll see you next time.